that's it. That is about 2,400 miles coast to coast, as close to full autonomy as you can get. In today's world, there are such few options out there that can even come close to what we just did. Now, was it perfect? Of course not. And that's kind of the point. What is that threshold? What are the boundaries? What can it do today? And honestly, two years ago, it wouldn't have been anywhere close to what we just did over the last couple of days. Now, yes, we had some failures along the way. We had some challenges, some of them pretty big, but we did overcome them. Thanks a ton. Again, a shout out to Tesla team in Tucson for getting us back on the road so quickly. We could not have done this without them, but this trip as a whole could not have been done just a couple of years ago. Take Tesla out of the equation, you can't do anything like what we just did. And that's a very important distinction. That said, there are a few things that did happen along the way that I think need to be brought up because these are really good opportunities to discuss what didn't work so well and how can we address that? We've actually kind of broken this down into a couple different categories. And really, when we look at what happened along this trip, there's things that happen that should not have happened. FSD can already handle these issues. So something failed that shouldn't have. And then there's some things that happen that clearly are not built into the software for one reason or another. So they actually need to be like developed. So those are two very different types of instances. And that's kind of how we've looked at the number of things that have happened along the way. Again, 2,400 miles unscripted, essentially on the road, whatever's there is there. So this is a real world example of trying to do exactly what Tesla is trying to make this car do long-term. Now we are on software version 13.2.9. We are right before version 14. That is what we have. The latest and greatest from Tesla, Juniper Model Y with the latest tech, no modifications. With that, here's the things that didn't work out so well. So first we're gonna talk about the supercharger locations as a whole. There were a couple times when the car made it to the parking lot or made it close to the parking lot, but not to the supercharger. And this is something to do with either map data, but also beyond map data, there has to be the ability of the car to recognize that's a supercharger. It connects to it automatically via Wi-Fi anyway, so it knows where the supercharger's at. It has to figure out how to get there. Lordsburg is the perfect one-off example that would probably solve almost all of the instances where the car just doesn't make it to the supercharger. First, when it comes in, it doesn't go into the correct parking lot. And we let it try to figure it out, but it just could not find its way into that parking lot. That's a problem. That happened at least twice where the car just couldn't make it to the supercharger. Furthermore, in Louisiana, when we were in that parking lot, it was actually construction in the middle of the parking lot. And it was between where the car wanted to go and where the superchargers were. They were actually expanding that supercharging location, which is great. This is a temporary problem, of course, but FSD needs to know what to do in that situation. And this is where I think AI is gonna really help bring FSD to the next level. It needs to start thinking through scenarios. What am I supposed to do? It just couldn't figure out exactly what to do next. It needs to start planning out, all right, well, maybe I should go this way, this way, or this way, and I think this is the best way to have success and start doing that. That's likely what we're gonna see probably in version 14 or one version of version 14 here very soon, which is gonna change a lot of that. In addition, we had two instances where FSD completely shut down, one randomly, and then one just less than an hour ago, unfortunately, during the rain. I have seen this in my Cybertruck, and it's only been during rain, but it certainly happens way more frequently in the Cybertruck than it does in this. It's only ever happened twice before this, so four times total. One of them was during rain, it just finally just said, nope, but it came back on within 10 seconds. The other one, it took a minute to recycle and there was nothing obvious about why it shut off. They asked me to take over the car immediately, which I did, of course. And then about a minute later, we were able to reactivate the system. I don't know what's causing this. In the past, when full self-driving was getting to a point where it wouldn't wanna work, it would give you warnings and slow you down, but I don't recall it ever shutting down like it does in version 13.2.9. So this is something new. It, was never frequently like it is now. So whatever it is that's causing FSD to say, I gotta shut off, I'm not sure what that is. There's gotta be a way to figure that out if it's going to be fully autonomous. One of the most frustrating takeovers of this trip, it is really, it. I was really upset when it happened and it was 
The car tried to overtake a semi on a city street on the right in a merging lane that was basically already coming to a close. There was no way to get around the semi because the front of the semi was beyond the end of the merge lane and the back of it was where it had already started to merge. So I don't know what prompted FSD to do this. We were in standard mode, so it shouldn't have been impatient enough to try to pass on the right to begin with. But when it did, I let it start to try to figure out but it started to accelerate. It was going to try to overtake that semi and it would have had to go off of the designated road lanes to do that, meaning it would have gone into the service lane, possibly into the grass a little bit to overtake the semi. That's terrible behavior, of course, in gridlock traffic. You are not going to be very popular. And this is something that full self-driving has been doing a lot lately. I've forced myself to use standard basically this entire trip. And I was surprised even in standard how many times FSD will wait till the last minute in merge lanes. And what we would normally on a day-to-day -day driving situation consider rude behavior, that kind of stuff I'm not so crazy about. Now there is a new situation that came up that clearly is not in development. And that is when we went through an immigration checkpoint, the vehicle did just fine getting to it. It slowed down naturally. I was ready to take over because I wasn't quite sure what was going to happen. And it did everything great until it was time to get to that point. Number one, there's no red light there. Number two, there's no stop sign there. So there's nothing naturally there telling the car you've got to stop here. And it actually ended up being an officer in a canine unit running in front of the vehicle that it finally started to slow down on its own. Of course, I had to stop the vehicle myself. So that's something it has to know that this is an immigration checkpoint and what do I do in this situation? Because with or without traffic, it is going to have to stop at the beginning of this before an agent will flag you to go forward. So that's a new one and that one seems like there's zero development on it. It kind of falls into that category. But that we're at the point where those are the types of things we need to address, which is a good thing. But it leads me to the other thing that clearly is not in the software, and that is obstacle avoidance. Now, I want to be very clear. In city streets, this thing does amazing avoiding obstacles. It'll try to avoid things as small as a thrown out McDonald's bag from the drive through And it did that just the other day. But on the highway, at some speed or on some road type, it shuts that logic completely off and it does nothing to avoid standard debris in the road. Of course, you know this from the most famous situation that we had where we hit a steel ramp and went airborne in this car. That trashed the battery, unfortunately. It did some damage to the car. There's nothing happening, whether it's tire debris, cardboard, plastic, paper, nothing. But when you get off of the highway, it will try to avoid those things. So I don't know if it's a speed threshold or if it's a type of road threshold that it's turning that logic on and off. In addition, we did have another takeover where we were on the highway and while the vehicle was changing lanes, unfortunately, as I could see this big piece of tire in between the lanes, it had already decided it wanted to switch lanes, did nothing to try. It was actually headed straight for it. So I had to take over. Frustrating that it does that, but again, there's zero logic happening in the computer on obstacle avoidance on the highway. Now this kind of leads back to another category that we talked about a moment ago where it's missing these superchargers. When it doesn't miss the superchargers, it will generally try to park itself. And sometimes, maybe just shy of 50% of the time, it'll actually back into a charging stall. And almost all the time when it does that, it's close enough that you can actually use a wand with that distance from the charger. However, it's not very clean parking. But on the flip side, if you manually select one of those stalls and you select auto park, it is spot on. It is so good, in fact, that what I noticed is when it backs into a charging stop at some of the locations that had recently been upgraded and they removed those bump stops that used to be there, if you look at the back tire, if you see those holes in the ground, about how wide that bump stop is, is where that back tire is stopping all on its own. So that logic is so good and it works so well, but that is very different than the logic it's using when it pulls in and tries to automatically back itself in, which is completely odd to me, but those are two different logic systems and somehow getting those two merged would be a huge plus because 50% of the time even automatically selecting a charger to back into, it would be great. But when it does do that, it needs to be like when I select that same parking spot from the screen and it does it by itself. Those are the things that need some work. 
On the other hand, this thing did amazing. Literally 2,400 miles. Yes, we had some issues where as a supervised system, I should have taken over. Those are situations that we had to overcome, but there is literally not one other car on the road that could come even close to what we did in this car. And I cannot say that enough. Shy of what this Model Y did on this trip, I'm telling you, you would not have even made it anywhere close to where we did. And even if you had to stop and start over, it would have taken you forever to get coast to coast like we just did. When we started this series, I said, full self-driving is here, or at least that's what they say. And we're here to test, is it actually here? And we are so close. We are in the golden age of autonomy. Not only is this happening in cities like Austin where Teslas are driving you to your destinations, but your own car that you can own can literally take you coast to coast. And as it sits on 13.2.9, there are some situations where you might have to take over, but they are limited and they are very far and few between. That limited far and few between and the amount of time that you're manually driving is so small that this is literally, if we stack all the time we use driving, it is at least 99 point something percent autonomous and point zero something percent manual driving. And that is freaking incredible. That is my take on this. I have previously been kind of bearish on FSD with Tesla, especially going to vision only until last year. Like I've said before, when V12 came out and certainly with V13, I cannot wait for V14 because I'm telling you right now, I use FSD absolutely everywhere. Doesn't matter if I'm just going to pick up the kids at school or I'm going to get groceries. FSD is the way to go and it is so good on this car. It is so good in fact that I truly believe that you can go coast to coast in this car without taking over and that's exactly what we tried to do. Minus a handful of issues, it did just that. And with that, I thank you so much for joining us today and I can't wait to catch you on the next one.